I mean, obviously, you know, Vitality get to pick it because it was it was Monty's my pick. But I'm just, you know, it could have been that Vitality would have would have wanted to maybe change things around. I said it the wrong way around before, but but basically, they're going to be the more favoured side for them probably. So they're fine with it. Speaks put to the test. SDY with the first killer mirage, jumping out right into Saibu. and Boris. He's not going to have a say in this one. He's already been shut down. Magus get the back. A lot of bullets put out, but he's going to get a chance to reload anyway. Swings for another one, and Waro. He was in the back. It wasn't him jumping in the front that got the kill there, but somehow. We've ended up in a two versus two. Dupree's going to be going down quick. And he's surely dead. Apex wow. out in the open. There's no hiding there. A crash style to get last couple of kills. It's a brilliant start here for Monty. Another pistol round secured by Monty here. They're looking so prolific on them. CT side or T side. It simply does not matter. They'll find anything you throw at them. 100% conversion rate so far in this best of three on the pistol round. Chris now. It's full buy from Monty. They bought up the rifles on all five players. The retaliation from Vitality is, of course, what we would expect. Chucking a scoped weapon in the hands of Zywoo. Everyone surrounding him with a little bit lesser weaponry. The Deagles and that MP9 onto Apex. His Majesty's going to fall to the wayside. Yeah, I love this buy. I, th I, I think it's always worth going for on the CT side, but why not? The only thing I maybe don't like is is that the scout is a little bit more passive in this one. Kind of wish that it could find some shots down through. They've also given up on the A-bomb side. That's uh, super calculated on, on the side of Vitality. They are hoping that this is going to be some kind of a B split. But the way that Monty are playing this round rather slowly at the moment, I'd be surprised if they don't get some information over here that there are some people in the bomb site. And they might also feel like there's nothing really going on to the A side. There's the jump. Apex has been spotted in the back. And yeah, they have no reason to rush into anything at the moment. And they're going to be leaning towards the A side. So probably from Vitality's point of view, it means they're just going to be saving what they have at the B-bomb side. And it'll be a pretty uneventful end to the round here. Yeah, the fact they only see Apex initially there as well towards the, uh, towards the van angle. That's where one player will usually just lurk around and hunt for that information. So Monty respecting that, clearing out the A-bomb site before they just send it. Either way. They do get that bomb planted. We aren't going to be seeing Vitality push off the back of this one. They are just going to be holding and hoping that Monty go for the hunt, but instead holding for exits, not looking to go to aggro. If they can keep all five players alive here, take these weapons, take a little bit of the util that they've got into the next round, they're going to be happy with it. Dupree does get taken down by Boros, though, as he does just go for just a very Boros swing. Yeah, he wanted to see if he could find it. But they confirmed there's a scout at the back of the bomb site. If they didn't know already, they do now. Second round here. Again, you like to see this kind of thing. You have time. You can figure out. Rounds after Vitality lost the pistol. They kind of forced up to be able to do some damage. It was the force by moving into round number four that they were able to convert and then chain a number of rounds together over on that CT side. This time, it's a full bite. Crash not going to be able to open up the round with kill onto Apex and looking to regain the complete B site control. Magic inside of mid, tons of damage, but not expecting Boros. You got three players already in this round, sub 20 HP. Debris is going to get taken down with a boosted Boros. He's going to be on the hunt for at least one more here as well, but Sphinx taps him out of the round. The Molotov not going to force him off the angle as of yet. Oh, that's not the way you want to get taken down, DemQ. As he's tapped in the side of the head with that USP from Zywo. Fights really breaking out all over this map. Just made it very confusing, I think, for the CT side to figure out exactly where to rotate. It was just everyone taking their own fights. Now it's real awkward, though. Monty, as you said earlier, very low on health. Combined 30 between the two of them. And the same is not true for the Vitality side. But if they get a bomb plant, maybe they could defend it with the AW and War. It's not a completely lost round, though. That's uh, already looking a bit questionable now. Kill from Spinks. Waro trying to see if he can get punch into the digits qu quick enough. And he's going to be able to. We'll smoke it off. Don't even know. I mean, it might confuse them a little bit. But they're going to show up eventually. They do not have a kit that's currently on anybody. So I don't know if there's one. No, there's no dead CTs over on the side. So this could be a little bit worrisome. That AWP could actually work out for them. Molotov, though, on the side where he's not quite guessing it. Oh, there we go. I thought he was going to throw it to the palace. Instead, towards Tetra, it's still pretty good. It means they are slowly limiting up those options for where he could be, and Cyber will find the shot. Full 10-second defuse coming in. I've plenty of time for it as well. Good could stuff. The use of smokes and, and Molotovs here at the end 
really making sure that they didn't have to check too many angles for the orb. Yeah, cutting off the sight lines makes that incredibly difficult. I can't remember if Warra got any kills in that round, actually, so I'm sure if the orb was revealed, either way, they played the round to perfection. That Molly was a, a nice respite. Wow, yeah, no! just spotting him at the edge no! as well. Round and round again. Now he's feeling substantially warmer than what we saw in that first half. Can Magix get another 30 bomb here? I mean, it's possible. He's only got two to his name so far. But we're only five rounds deep. 28 more to find. The people at home think it's going to be incredibly easy for him. I was going to say, there was a lot of Magix fans in the, in the, in the chat. You, you could appreciate that. Oh, for sure. The amount Morris. of experience, the amount of years he's been playing. It makes sense there's a lot of fans. Yeah. They weren't fans already. Might have got converted on the last map. Mm. They take Boris out at the start of the round here. Rough. Really yeah, rough. he's not had the same explosive start. It's a lot to ask for as well, but they need him. That's the problem. Monty do need him to, to pave the way a little bit. The MQ's on zero as well. Krasnow doing most of the work at the moment, but a lot of those kills were from the pistol round. I think three of them. So... It is a much more flat start. In spite of the fact that they have the three-round three, three round lead here or the three-to-one scoreline, they need more than that. Saibu's going to find the headshot on Warrior, and it's a five versus three, and they're going to get slaughtered in this bomb site. No utility to block off that CT spawn or anything with. It's a very easy cleanup. I think Vitality are feeling very comfortable right now. Yeah, for sure. I think we can kind of look at those three rounds and forget they exist because it doesn't seem to have affected the mental of Monty at all. The second that they lost that fourth round in the previous... Vitality started to feel themselves once again, and there you go from Zywu inside of mid. Doing everything he needs to, and that no! site. Above 25 kills every single map, it might be one of the best runs from an individual player that we would have seen. SQY yeah, inside of mid, but it's not going to happen, right? It's going to be incredibly difficult for him to be able to maintain this type of momentum. And Boros, this is more Boros-esque, it would seem. Sprinting yeah. out of underpass to be able to find Sphinx with no util to be able to back him up. Does now plume a smoke to be able to block the sight line, but pushes straight through it to be able to find Magis. Looks for the pre as well. And here you go. The vibes are flowing in the server for Monty and for Boros explicitly as he finds himself three kills in this round. Apex with everything to find. All five bodies staying alive on the server for Monty. Yeah, and that's the kind of stuff that they've been able to defend very well against in the previous round's vitality. They've been able to trade him out of these moments, but it's all very individual, right? He gets the first one, picks up uh, Sphinx, and just pushes through the smoke, and there's no real trade kills happening here on the vitality side. It's really impressive, and it's really aggressive as well to make sure that that doesn't happen too much. Mm. Demq goes down to the start of it. Oh, don't know why, how there's a Molotov there. Don't think anyone knows. Boris, he's ready. He's doing it again. Yeah, he wants to. Why not? Why wouldn't you want to do it again? Did Dupree spot him? I think oh, yeah. I think now he definitely has. And that's awkward for Boros. Now he's weirdly trapped. Ooh. Actually, for the smoke in there. Cyber on the other side. Good communication. And this round is getting a little bit blown up. And you know what? This is a horrible turn of events for Monty because Vitality had no money really left. If they could win this round, there would be such a huge turnaround and they could really start to pick it up in the first half. Waro in a one versus five that he's trying to win. But the bomb is back in T-spawn. Yeah, bomb nowhere to be seen at this current moment in time. And Waro got so many bodies to find here. Dupree is going to be able to take him down as he tries to abuse the edge of that smoke. Had to find the kill inside a connector and just not ready for the catwalk to be held. Great long range fight there for Magis to be able to take down Krasnall and got Boris getting so much ground there. If Zywu doesn't find him, and then that's our living in. A lot of util going to be available for this T side for what looks to be a posted up A execute. Only one person defending right now, but rotational positions available if needed. And SDY hiding Ooh. inside this Boris again, <laughs> getting the opening on Megis. It's really sick, isn't it? Up to seven kills now after a slightly slow beginning. And SDY sneaking out of that smoke he was standing in all along. This is real interesting. Now, it looks like they're going to be leaving one person in the palace and rotate the rest on back through T-spawn. They still have plenty of time left. They were really good on the T side of Nuke of slowing it down and allowing... Vitality to get a little bit nervous on the CT side and start to push on in SDY. What a find. That needs to be a kill, though. Oh, no. 
I think he spider spotted both of them, and they might still be in trouble here at the bomb site. But this is really awkward. Dupree trying to buy a little bit of space for himself, but SDY is already so deep in there. He makes up for the earlier failure, and now he's going to be really well defended here. Just spraying him down. Apex should be 100% dead, and he will be. Boris will take down Cyber at the meantime. And it's a very critical round there coming out from the T side. Yeah, it looks like SDY almost squandered that entire opportunity. Caught two of them sleeping inside of mid window, but wasn't able to find the kills. But then was able to recover it once he executed over towards this B bomb site. Was down to two bullets when he went for that third and final fight from someone jumping out of the window and wasn't able to hit that one tap. It's probably worth it though. A little bit of an attempted flick. Got to be careful about sticking around, though, again, when you don't have any of the armor, any needs to land in here, or any bullets to the face, and you're going to be in trouble. Down in the underpass, though, Dupree, he's going to be able to get the one, but Boris is swiftly on his tail. Could they grenade him out of here? They've already done a little bit of damage. You can see Spinks is really hungry to try and pick it up, and Boris relentlessly aggressive through the window, through the smoke, looking to take the fight here, and he almost has it against Saibu. He just wants to keep going. Finally going to be found. The aggression will put, be put down. And now it's a three on four. War walking into the middle, but Sphinx is going to be able to take care of him, no problem. Yeah, this was looking like a really nice setup round for Monty, but just not able to convert it. They do begin recovering it, though, bringing Apex down to 22 HP with the bomb now. Kind of stuck on an island over towards short. Oh, DemQ. Lucky to still be in the round as Zywoo does find him on that. But we'll see. We're already seeing it across the entire RMR. Teams adapting to this kind of what we're dubbing tier 1.5 to tier 2 playstyle. Speaking about that, DemQ, he's looking to be able to swing onto a couple of players who have pushed deep into enemy territory. But they do begin falling back as Zywoo whips that opening shot. Only a brief moment where he was able to spot an opponent, though. We'll let him off. Still going to be in a good spot, though. A lot of util committed inside of mid with Boros. Oh, no one has any... Oh, no, he spots the gun barrel, though, Sphinx. Going to be able to take down Boros early once again. That bench position worked against oh. him twice now. And he just got out of there. Wasn't far off of SDY, able to just steal that kill away, but it's not going to be the case. Four on five with MQ almost dead already. Both Warrior and Crystal taking a little bit of grenade damage and just enough that those M4s or even the FAMAS become kind of dangerous for the one-shot headshot. So you want to be really scared of that. And nobody is really attacking the A bomb side at the moment. It's going to be down to this double setup at B, but I think they should be okay with it. They've already got the boost up. I think Dupree's been boosted up into that box inside of the bomb site. And Apex is jumping for it. It's really hard to check when you are low on time, that exact position. And oh, the nade in there. They're going to walk so right into it. That's <laughs> devastating. That is a massive grenade doing well over 100 damage spread across four players. There should be no... Yeah, they might as well walk away. I think walking into that is basically asking you to lose every single rifle. Yeah, that's perfect timing from Apex. Incredibly rough for Monty. I mean, you already had low HP players, but... Then just getting oh. a nade chucked out. Is that another one? Oh, it's a flash. Oh, God, it made Waro panic, though. It made us panic as well. <laughs> Could have been another HE to be able to take him down, but looks like he is going to be safe for it. Dupree has the money to be able to push through this one. He's just going to be bouncing around to see if anyone's hiding inside the smoke. Not to be the case, though. And three players do indeed survive. Look at this nade. All four stacked, and oh, damn cute. Oh, my G. I you would be so proud. Oh, God. Apex. Um, it's good. It's a good mental tap. Impossible not to love Apex. It really is. Uh, very true. Very true. Well, we've got a couple of AKs, three of them, in fact, an AWP as well on Waro. They're going to try and put some speed behind this one. Crasto, he can't get the opening he wanted. Demq goes down. Next is for Mars is a huge stopping force. This Magus will pick up two kills and make it a three versus four. And Spinks, he's been very good at catching Boris in the middle. What a great matchup as well. Spinks versus Boris to try and fight for that connector position. But the fact that Spinks is coming out ahead is a massive problem. I have no doubt that for a lot of it here, the game plan really is to send Boris to connector to just murder the entire other team. But Spinks is holding it. It worked a number of rounds in a row, and we've seen this kind of smoke set up that they've been attempting to abuse. Kind of pop one over towards the entrance on the A-bomb site, and then one a little bit closer where we see Zyru standing right now, just so he can sneak on through. But they've been able to adapt. Rounds, think about whatever they want, and Monty need more. 
even if it's their map pick, whatever they can get here. Seventh will make a huge difference for them, I have no doubt. They might have done enough to get into six rounds, so it's not like it is a disaster. But we've already seen how strong Vitality can be once they start to feel a little bit of momentum going their way. SDY, he's down at the start of the round. And Boris, for once, is looking a bit hesitant at the top of mid. It's a rare sight to behold because normally he will fight anyone, anywhere. And they are going to be looking for him, actually. Spinks just making his way back now. DemQ going to be going down. And it's a five versus three. Spinks, a lot to find here. Knows that there's at least one more player inside of underpasses. He takes a couple of tags from Waro 2K. And oh, okay, that mid fight, a little bit labored from both Boris and Debris. Neither of them holding, but just through the smoke. Going to be able to find him on the trade, though. Now just Waro in a one versus four. In the final round of the half, it's not looking particularly likely that we're going to see a seventh round here for Monty. The sixth is all they're going to be able to find on the T side. It's a good start. The real question is, are they going to be able to convert any more on that CT side? They've got a 100% conversion rate on the pistol round so far in this series. Oh, and that's what we're looking to see over towards this B-bomb site as well. This is a big commitment from them on this pistol round. It's only SDY to defend them early on. Yeah, Boris is nowhere in sight, at least not yet. He is trying to rotate in through the market, but they need to get here before he does. Waro shows up as well to try and land a shot. It's pretty good. He's going to get the one a little bit slow to get the headshots here. But now Boris is right, finally inside of the smoke, just hiding for it. And they're going to catch a couple of kills. Boris, he's waited. His teammates have fought without him because he's been hiding in here. This had better be oh. good. It's just the one shot, and it is beautiful, but that's not going to cut it. He could have fought with his team. Instead, he wanted to go really big on that one. Demq is going to go down. Make us to find the last one. And a pistol round goes the way of Vitality. First one that Vitality have won in this series. And what an important one it is to find as well. We needed to see Monty pick this one up to be able to grab themselves that seventh round and avoid Vitality moving into double digits. Now they're just six rounds away from closing out this series. God, being able to shut down Boros like that is a little bit uncharacteristic. It's a very tricky scenario. Grenade or something, but That's it. It kind of does make sense. I could see a risk with it as well, but um, they weren't punished for it this time. 12 to 6. And the truth is, if Vitality win this round, it's they're going to be almost walking over the victory cleanly here. See, 12 to 1 odds are going on there. That's probably not crazy at the moment if you're talking about the whole series. They, they simply have to win this round. They do have the AWP. They have two kits as well and some grenades to play around with. Not that many on the CT side with there being still a minute and 17 seconds on the clock. That's where the issues start coming in, isn't it? We've had this conversation plenty of times. If your CT side is using all of their util before you've really seen anybody, you're gonna, need, you're gonna struggle in the retake, in the post plant, in the stopping of that full execute. Just a single molly can be all that you need. And if you've used it already to stop an early push, it's not gonna work out in your favor. Waro though, doesn't need to use any form of util to be able to find that kill onto the pre. He's blinded, still finds it. Demq on the close angle picks up Apex as well. Now we see this additional presence and Spinks inside of mid, but he pumps the brakes. 35 seconds on the clock. We need to see a commitment here from Vitality, and I'm not too sure where it's going. With the post up here They're over saving. towards Palace, are they saving? Yeah, yeah. They're just saving it. With 30 seconds left, they're definitely saving it. I'm I'm really interested. I f if there were any flashbangs thrown there from the T side, they certainly did connect with, with any of the two players that were holding that position. It's only Warro. Yeah, yeah. yeah that that's, that's not going to be quite... I mean, he's really deep in CT spawn, so... Even if you flash him, he's going to be unflashed pretty quickly, right? It's hard. You can't land a flashbang that deep. Um, wow. Yeah, that was, that was kind of a flat round. They wait around for a long time, and when they go for it, they send two people out of the ramp with limited utility. They did have missing. Like, if they were able to find at least one more kill over towards that A-bomb site, then he can just push up into connect. So he's forced the rotation through and made them play a different angle. Instead, not to be the case, and Zywu... He simply does not miss them, does he? Taking down Boros once again. The main fragger on the sidelines before the round's even started. This is great from Apex as well with a spam. Out onto the bomb site to be able to take down Waro. Now yeah. there is a two-man advantage. Boros was lured into that kill as well because the spam through the smoke, he reads that as, as an opportunity to maybe push when they're reloading. 
Good shot for Magus. I expect nothing less of that range. DemQ here. Oh, he dug down, but Magus is on fire right now. A huge double leaves Krasnell on the other side just to try and save the gun. But they're already on him. They already know where he is. They're going to be hunting for him. Why wouldn't they? They know that Monty don't really have the economy. I mean, they have a little bit more than the previous round because they did win that one. But they're not out of the woods yet. It will definitely be a 13 to 7 scoreline. And every single rifle here, or the one that they have, is going to make a big difference. So, that's rough. Yeah, it really is. Chris now, if he can find a kill here, recover an AK, it's going to be a hard fight against Spinks. We know how clean he's been across this entire game. And, oh, my goodness. Bit of a sitter missed there from Spink. Stares at Crass now for a few moments, but the job is done at the end of the day. Taking that M4 out of the round, out of the next round as well, ensures that more money has to be expended on that CT side. They're going to have to hope and pray they can take out a small loan. Oh, yeah, fair well. enough. I mean, that, that just kind of sums up you being killed by Zaiwu, right? It's like, oh, oh yeah, it's, uh, fair enough. Like, uh, I probably shouldn't have been killed there by most Orpers, but this one will do it to me. Nice. Yeah, not a fun. And the 21st round, Apex. I don't know if he saw anything there. He definitely hears that now. DemQ with a wild jump okay. out. They're going to be able to trade at the very least, but that's probably not worth it. No, I I don't know if I even respect that swing there from DemQ. I mean, it was information gaining to be sure, but the MP9 on this map can be insane if you play the correct angles. Jumping round corners and as a full HP player, basically working as that kind of recon drone to hunt round is not what you need. Sure, the trade is there, but I'd much rather have those two players just defending the A bomb site and have it as a 5v5. Oh. Dear, Magus, he was not looking for that at all, but manages to pick up the kill anyway. He's worried that there might be a more of a push coming. He reads that and maybe like a consolidated push from the CT side. Spence. They're all at the bomb side. They got three oh. people here, but Spinks just doesn't care. He's going to open it up anyway, and now it's all on Boris burning Ooh. inside of the bomb site. And there's no, there's no reason why they have to fight him. I mean, they might as well leave him alone. I think Cyber's now figured out that he's rotated on back. They still have time. If they wanted to go for underpass, they could. But they're going to go straight for it. With the smoke already up, they're going to get the bomb plant to the B bomb site. And Boris should absolutely be dead here. Yeah, as I, we can hear all of these audio cues as well. And Boros is none the wiser that Zyru's on the site. Yeah, going to be uh, covered by the triple box stack as well. And it's a 14th round now for Vitality. Yeah, things are looking hot right now. And that's probably all the money gone here. Even with the round loss bonus, I think they're going to be in trouble on the Not CT enough. side. This is sick. Sphinx actually walks into a triple stack and just blows it up. Obviously, one of them is low from early rounds. with the first round. Now would be the time to do it because you don't have any more runway. This is pretty much it. You have to win this round or Vitality will walk away right into the legend stage. DemQ is going to get the one kill there, but instant return. Boris not able to roll that into any more kills. Four versus three now. Boris out of the shot at the spot, but they're going to be checking this. The Molotov just there to make sure there's no one orping at the oh, corner. No. Magus is getting rid of them at range with the AK. Two beautiful headshots, and the auto shotgun is not going to be a useful weapon in this scenario. It'll be 15 rounds on the side of Vitality here to the seven of Monty, and again, they use all of their money in this round. Yeah, there's going to be no buy whatsoever coming into this one. Vitality, they're looking to punch their ticket to the legend stage off the back of this following round. Look at the econ from the T side. Even though Zywu got taken down before win bonus 4K, Apex has uh, the second least next to Sphinx. But they're still alive in the round. They don't really have to recommit here. SDY might be able to get one XM10 kill if they swing incorrectly, but he's flashed off. Oh, I thought he was going to be able to save it. And well, the look on their faces. Honestly, they don't look too dejected here. I think it's kind of set in. We're going up against Vitality in this one. That first map was our opportunity, and we unfortunately squandered it with an amazing comeback from the current T side. But 15th round on the board. Vitality looking to close this one out.
I have no doubt that this is probably a little bit of a sour feeling for Monty, but I actually think no! if he it feels like necessarily yet to have this kind of run in and just get stopped. Boris is going to get shot down at the start of the round. I think having it now, before you even get to the major, could really help them prep for it and sort of be more ready for it. So I'm not too sad for Monty, but yeah, this is a world-class performance coming out from Vitality at the moment. Four on four in what could be the last round. One more kill goes to Vitality and everything is going to be open. Apex is good with the spray, going to be taking on SDY and it's a four versus three and they're just going to keep on going. Apex is feeling confident right now and they're collapsing from the middle as well. Dupree on the three. one side, Meg is gone the other. They line up for him nearly. Krasnell actually does get one, but he's still on his own. One versus two here. He's looking for this one to be able to keep their torch.